very good evening once again and welcome to UBC News tonight at exactly two minutes past 10 p.m. My name is Sharon Chomdisha. Let's take a look at our top stories of the day. Coming up tonight, Prime Minister Nabaja hails President Museveni for entrusting women in leadership. Right Reverend Wilson Chiseka enthroned Bishop of Luero Diocese. Christians commemorate Palm Sunday with a call on the youth to be steadfast. And of course, later on, National Council of Sports eyes the future and underlines plans to tap into the grassroots. We start off with the Vice President, Jessica Lupo, who has commissioned a 1.2 billion Ugandan shillings Cori Talk Health Center 3 in Katakwe District. It was constructed with funding from Uganda Intergovernmental Fiscal Transfers Program, UGIFT, um, pursuant to, Uganda, to the government policy of ensuring that each sub-county gets a well-equipped health center three. She appealed to women to utilize the facilities to access antenatal services and also avoid the killer diseases. She said no woman should deliver from home. significant ceremony to launch a facility which the government has established in order to upgrade this facility from Health Center 2 to Health Center 3. So let's congratulate ourselves on that one. To move from a Health Center 2 to a Health Center 3 is a clear manifestation that there, there was a need and the patients have been coming here for attention, requiring government to upgrade it to a health center three. But let me also thank government, because as we stand here today, this very facility has already been elevated to a health center four. Let's thank government for that. Because a health center four will have additional human resources and also additional infrastructure which will make the health facility more, more useful, especially in areas which the patients have been walking long distances to Katakui, to Matan, to find attention. The government of Uganda pursues the health issues on two angles. Firstly, on preventive, preventive angle. And this is the one I would like to emphasize here. First and foremost, even if we're in a health facility, however nice it is, we as government encourage all of you to prevent disease and work with all health professionals to make it possible. All Ugandans are also encouraged to visit a health facility to have routine checks on your health. And that is the first line of, of, of government intervention on the matters of health. But secondly, the government emphasizes curative angle as well, especially when you have been tested and found to be sick. I would like to advise you that please stick to the medical schedule which your medical physician has prescribed. And secondly, ensure that you follow the advice of the medical professionals, especially in ensuring that you don't spread the disease. We want it used very well. Just be used very well. 
using something very well means you keep it in the form it is. We have to have some budget. The DHO, the cow, we want to come back here after one year and find this facility still glittering, providing the required services that you guys are expecting from this. I'm happy that today is a very great day in Usu. I'm humbled that during the time that we are here as members of parliament together with High Excellency, such an achievement has come. But most importantly, we are so grateful to our fountain of honor, His Excellency the President, who has labored and continued to provide these services to our people. Now moving on from that, Premier Nabanja has lauded President Yuri Museveni for retaining her as Prime Minister this way after joining Christians at Our Lady of Lords Bujumbura Cathedral in Hoima City to celebrate Palm Sunday at a mass celebrated by the Bishop of Hoima Catholic Diocese, Right Reverend Bishop Vincent Chilawa Morty. Take a look. Nabanja joined Christians at Our Lady of Lourdes Ujumbra Cathedral in Hoima City, where she thanked President Museveni for retaining her as the Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda. <laughs> Nabanja, who was joined by the State Minister for Public Service, Mary Grace Mogasa, said reappointment in various positions is a sign of confidence and dedication in serving Ugandans. <laughs> Nabanja appealed to Ugandans to embrace the government programs. Program a PDM. program. The Bishop of Hoima Catholic Diocese, Right Reverend Vincent Chilabo, thanked President Yoweri Museveni for the support he accords to the church. He also acknowledged the role played by women in the development of the country. Mama Prime Minister, Abakazi watukole ili chikuwa to muno. Mbu omezi waitu. Later, the Prime Minister donated 50 million shillings towards the ongoing construction of the Hoima Women and Children Specialized Hospital. Uheleza emilioni atan, abulimuruka, kandi otaka hoire wele yongere weleze emilioni atan. Nizo emilioni chikumi. Kekisu wa wele izo mwako kuhoire. Tukubasa wa bebe mezi inyuena. Praying for development of this country. I encouraged the people of Bunyoro sub region and, you, and indeed the whole country to embrace government programs and take advantage of the conducive environment to develop themselves. We want everybody in this country to involve him or herself in development activities. Take advantage of PDM, EMIOGA, and many programs. And so I also brought them best wishes from His Excellency the President. And of course, as somebody who has just been given another term, so I felt necessary to come and pray from my cousin. Benon Mokwaya. Soha Ismail, UBC. The newly enthroned Bishop of Luero Diocese, Right Reverend Wilson Chiseka, has been challenged to embrace teamwork and also foster reconciliation among the already divided flock as the only way of restoring 
and sanity in the diocese. This has been sounded at St. Mark's Cathedral in Luero District at the consecration of Right Reverend Wilson Chiseka, 4th Bishop of Luero Diocese. It is 8.30 a.m. of Sunday, 24th March 2024, and this procession of clergy marks the beginning of consecration service of the Bishop elect Royal Diocese, Reverend Canon Wilson Chiseka. <laughs> Led by the Archbishop Church of Uganda, the Most Reverend Samuel Kazimba Mkalu, all has happened at St. Marcus Cathedral in Wero District. <laughs> and thereafter, the consecration service commenced with the Michana Bishop, Right Reverend James Bukomiko, reading the Gospel, and Bishop Michael Wa of Central Uganda being the day's preacher. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Be the Father to everyone. Because God has called you to be the Father of everyone. And dear Bishop Eric, you will use your voice in your own words to invite Reverend Canon Godfrey Kasana to come back. That you work together because you need him and he needs you. Take a step of faith that when you call him, he will come back. Just as Bishop Eric said, as he is calling Canonics, forgive each other. You Christians forgive each other. In a church filled to capacity by both clergy and Christians, at 10.40 a.m., the bishop-elect Canon Wilson Kiseka took an oath of acceptance of the new law. I, Reverend Canon Wilson Kiseka, I swear that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Archbishop of Church of Uganda. This was under the watch and seal of the Archbishop Church of Uganda, Right Reverend Stephen Samuel Kazimba Mkalu. I hereby declare to you that the Right Reverend Wilson Iseka has been duly enthroned in testimony of which the enthronement calls for, among others, handing over the new bishop the instruments of power and authority as he makes repeated concessions. I, the Grand Canon Wilson Iseka, I declare that I will be bound by the Constitution and the canons of the Church of Uganda. In both addresses by the Bride and Archbishop, it was emphasized that the Church thrives on unity and prayers. <laughs> President Yuri Kakutam Seven delegated the Works and Transport Minister, General Katumba Wamala, to represent him. I commend religious institutions for the role played in mobilization to raise our people's standards of living and their efforts to promote unity and harmony among the people of Uganda. Museven, however, challenges religious leaders to stretch their gospel beyond worship and prayers. As believers, we have other human needs that must be satisfied that include food, clothing, shelter, education, and medicine. And failure to attain these, one is considered to be living in poverty. Museven, however, extended a 50 million pledge as well as a vehicle to the incoming shepherds to ease his duties. Other members of the congregation included Minister Amos Rugorobi, Right Reverend Rollins Mukasa, the Bishop of Kasanaru Weiru, Uganda Luchiko Speaker Patrick Ruaga Mugumbuli, among others. Royal Diocese has not only been under the caretake of Bishop William Sebagala, but for a while has been engulfed in disputes arising from the nullification of Canon Reverend Godfrey Kasana, who was the first bishop elect chosen to follow the footsteps of retired Reverend Eldad Nsubuga, the third bishop of this administration. Robert Nyango, 
UBC News. Youth in Uganda challenged to utilize the Holy Week to widen opportunities in securing employment. Former Minister of State for Youth and Children Affairs, Florence Nachwala Chiinji, says that getting close to God is complementary to acquiring employable skills. Now, this was also uh, during the Palm Sunday Mass at Luaga Cathedral in Kampala. Take a look. <laughs> The procession leading to Rubaga Cathedral on Palm Sunday started from the neighboring Centenary Bank. Congregants in their hundreds were here to celebrate one of the most important days in the Christian calendar. They were joined by former State Minister for Youth and Children Affairs, Florence Omukama Katonda Yanzigula Amatu Era Sajema Sadda Mabega Amabega Gange Nagarekera Abankuba. The mass was led by Father Stephen Mayanja, the assistant. Cathedral Administrator. The messages rotated around renewing relationships with God. This was emphasized by the cathedral administrator, Father Achilles Mayanja, in agreement with other leaders. This week is so important that without this week, the Christian faith is nothing, because in this week we will remember and we will reenact the suffering, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You can be saved from the main killer diseases. So this is the holy month which gives back to the Christians. So everybody out there should come to Rubaga Cathedral. Everybody should kneel down and pray. Everybody should fast so as to answer the main questions of unemployment and poor health. Former State Minister for Youth, Florence Nakiwarakiinji, told youth to embrace spiritual living to widen economic opportunities. This is the holy month that Ugandans should use to sort out the main hazards in the country like unemployment and poor health. We want to plead to the youth and the young people to go back to God, to pray so hard that you can meet the person who can employ you. Palm Sunday ushers in the Holy Week, which culminates into Easter Sunday celebrations. Henry Okrut, UBC. Now, Christians have been asked to know the meaning of Palm Sunday and to their lives other than just celebrating the day. This was communicated by the Provost from All Saints Nairobi, the very Reverend Canon Evans Omolo, who was the guest preacher at All Saints Cathedral, Nakasero. On Palm Sunday, Christians remember the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Today Christians gathered in big numbers at All Saints Cathedral Nakaselo to commemorate Palm Sunday. The guest preacher, the very Reverend Canon Evan is Omoro from Nairobi, asked Christians to know the meaning of Palm Sunday other than just carrying the palms to church and commemorating that day. It's a stubborn invitation to each one of us here, the young and the old, the rich and the not so rich, to the lowly and the high. To those of you who have different formations of human body, the thin and the little adult, 
This pattern they invite us to pursue peace at all fronts in our lives. Peace with self, peace with family, peace with members, peace with colleagues at work, peace with judgments. Reverend Kanyani Omolo also asked Christians to renew their lives unto Jesus. And so Jesus is the king. And when he is the king, he deals with anything that threatens the peace of his kingdom. And so your life is a representation of the dwelling of Jesus Christ. Because you are anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are believing here, who's been on the verge of giving up because of negativity pushed against you? This man from Nairobi stands here to encourage you to remain firm in the Lord. Minister for Investment, Ivrini Anita, and Minister for Trade, Industry and Cooperatives, David Bahati also attended the service. Is that we must love one another and we must make peace with our enemies. So if you're out there and you don't love anyone because of political reasons, because of social reasons, I just want to ask all of us to forgive and make peace. And peace is the only way we can prosper in our lives. As we join the Holy Week, we pray that God will guide us and direct us to have peace with our family, to have peace with our communities and have peace uh, within the nation. The minister thanked God for their reappointment as ministers by the president in the recent cabinet reshuffle. And it is for the hard work that I get rewarded. I want to ask God that as I start this journey, that I'm able to work more harder for the, for the prosperity of my country, the growth of the economy, because I am in charge of attracting FDI and encouraging the domestic investors to invest their money in the right places. We first of all want to thank him for uh, personally retaining me in the cabinet and we uh, have a commitment that I will continue to do what we can to our best to ensure that we industrialize, industrialize our nation. Deborah Namamunde, UBC News. Now, Prophet Joseph Tomosimo of Kevin's Gate Christian Church of Nations, Uganda Matuga, is very optimistic that the suffering and coming of our Savior Jesus Christ will deliver mankind from all shortcoming. He has been leading the Palm Sunday service in Matuga, Wakiso District. Palm Sunday is when Jesus Christ was preparing for his uh, death. Where he was, he was doing the great work, perform miracles. He decided, let us go back into Jerusalem, because as it was, that no prophet should die outside Jerusalem. So he entered Jerusalem for the fulfillment of the prophecy. And uh, as it is in Isaiah 53, verse 3, 4, 5, that he was beaten, smitten for our sins, and by his stripes we are healed. So he died for our problems, he died for our sins, so that for us we can be cleansed and be healed. Though it, the, his death means the defeat of death, so it means for us we are here to jubilate to be happy, to be joyful in our families, in our lives, to have our finances redeemed, to have our lives restored, our finances to be restored, because we've been uh, fasting and praying over all family issues, finances, challenges, our illnesses, so being that by his stripes you are healed, so we pray for the healing of the whole country. A section of scholars define conflict as an engine of social learning where attitudes, behavior, and relationships are tested.
But dealing with conflict highly depends on how it is being handled. In the case of the conflicts which have over time hit political parties in Uganda, experts say that there are possible solutions to minimize the costs associated with the respective fights. Our reporter Daniel Mogoya engages analysts to share views on conflict resolution in political parties. The three and a half year old National Unity Platform Party is the recent political party to face what the public described as crisis. There are allegations of illicit money by some leaders after serving as a leader of opposition for two and a half years. There are also views that former leader of opposition Matthias Impuga was hailed by several institutions for his service including the National Unity Platform. And the mentorship that you've given to various leaders including myself. Thank you for the insistence and bravery to face in some out, seemingly insurmountable odds. Thank you. Nope then appointed Nyendomukungwe MP Mpuga to the Parliamentary Commission and Nakawa West MP Joel Senyonyi replaced Mpuga as the leader of opposition. But Nope, under a social media-led drive to expose allegations of corruption, faulted Mpuga for obtaining illicit money. If we really agree that he's Nope, and we appreciate the role of rope. And we also take the, the, the position of rope as it should be. Can, does that tend to amount to become a scandal? That's, what, that's why I have a bigger question. No party asks Mpuga to resign and apologize. The tension increased momentum after Nyendo Mukungwe MP Mpuga vowed not to adhere to the calls by the noob. The allegations slapped against Mpuga seem to have divided the national unity platform. The issue is about how the party leadership is handling the crisis. That politics should end. Other people, you say, no, 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 no. Yeah, so what? If I'm not a member of parliament, I die. Or I'll starve to death. They don't know that some of us are even tired of being members of parliament. This has captured media attention. There are questions on resolution of conflicts in political parties. There must be an internal mechanism to handle such issues before letting the same go into public domain. There will always be tension between laws of a party and laws of the country mm. and maybe laws of parliament. Mm. Those tensions can be there. So the solution is having political parties having their principles a senior lecturer of political history at Makere University, Professor Mwambusi Andebesa, questions norms, principles and values in institutions of Uganda. Professor Andebesa says the rift was due to not following codes of behavior. Mpuga, for example, did not or does not or behaved beyond the, the, the political practice of NUP, but it cannot easily be caught in respect of a specific code pursuant to which he would be brought to order. So, the noob Mpuga tensions could be challenges affecting political-based institutions in Uganda. You see, we have a challenge. In our society, many people are poor, majority mm. are poor. Money is always an issue. FDC has the problem it has because people tagged Mugisha Muntu as a mole. When those who were tagging him as a mole, as a mole were the moles, as history has told. So such conflicts have the capacity to change things, maybe conclusively, but this is only if the players make justice an integral part of conflict resolution. Also, the stakeholders must understand the immediate tools to clean up the institutions. We should uh, prioritize building institutions rather than building individuals. Going to court for declaration, if it is true that money was allocated to commissioners, mm. for declaration whether the approach which was employed is constitutional, is legal, and therefore that kind of arrangement should be maintained and ratified. Mm. Two, going for an act of parliament mm. to ratify and confirm what, what was made 
by commissioners. So how long is the process of conflict resolution? We haven't had a national outlook. That's a, a, a challenge. But also the political class is more interested in positions in the government for financial benefits, mm. not correcting the wrongs that have gone in this country. On the other hand, the responsiveness is a hallmark for modern democracy and perhaps parliament to interact with citizens. These laws seem not to cover all eventualities and the evidence by the general public could have parliament's response. Now, there is something in, on the internet, there is something in the social media. So respond to it, not necessarily by sanctioning a member of parliament or any other official parliament, mm. but by investigating. We are not saying they should have sanctioned, mm. but investigate. Public response mm. by parliament is necessary in a democracy. Several weeks after the storm in Noop, the leader of opposition, Joel Senyonyi, addressed a press conference to alert the respective agencies investigating the matter. The first one is to the Inspectorate of Government, and uh, this letter was received. But as events unfold, President Yoweri Museveni on Saturday defends Speaker Anita Among on the allegations which the President attributes to traitors empowered by foreigners. When you talk so much on the social media about Anita Mong, Anita Mong, how about the ones who are working for foreigners? The imperialists who want, who want Uganda, Africa to be a slave again, we are going to expose those traitors. He lost the... President Museveni's stand to defend Speaker Anita Mong literally silences allegations of corruption. By the grace of God. The leaders must differentiate between political and financial corruption. Professor Ndebesa claims that the anti-corruption agencies aim at financial corruption, including embezzlement, and forget about political corruption. Which needs to be dealt with through technical investigations, but also political investigation or political exposure. Mm. So you cannot use just technical uh, investigations and uh, anti-corruption procedures and you expect to deal with political corruption. Nevertheless, there is emerging political cultism in Uganda. The subscribers of political parties, especially those built in form of cultism, do not have time to capture the mistakes of their leaders which endangers the political environment. But who can do that one effectively? It is a political followership. It is the citizens. So fellow citizens, don't promote political cultism. The road to 2026 is here, with most political players mastering the junctions to front their interests. Daniel Mugoya, UBC News. <laughs>
the brain of Honorable Ochoa is the only, I think, Ochoa in the whole of Palisa among the MPs that we have elected so far. Ochoa is the only person I see uh, having that love of a common man. I want to appreciate and thank most of the Almighty God who takes time but answers once for, for today's occasion. I'm more so very happy. One, I am a strong NRM. I am an NRM and I support NRM candidates. I'm happy with what has happened today and what God has done for us. From Agule, we are happy. We love for the We want to congratulate him. A group from National Unity Platform in Kakomiro District have defected to the National Resistance Movement Party. They were led by Geoffrey Sabugwao, who pronounced to the Prime Minister's country home in Kakomiro Town Council, Kakomiro District. We're so sorry about that, but we let we earlier on had that story where there were no defectors that joined the NRM party. Um, moving on from that, Ministry of Kampala, Hajat Minza Kabanda, has echoed increased political involvement amongst Muslim women. Kabanda made the remarks at the Saidina Abu Bekar Islamic Hospital. Minister of Kampala Metropolitan Affairs, Hajat Minsa Kabanda, has urged women to step forward into the political arena, emphasizing their pivotal role in shaping societal norms and advocating for their rights. Because, uh, for us, we are there and to encourage others. We are growing old. If we grow old, if they don't join us, then that means they're not going, we, are going, no, we are going to miss out Muslim leaders. So they should also join Muslims and they share the experience they have in Islam and everywhere because they are, these are professional people who can actually do some good work for the government. The president of the Islamic Medical Association of Uganda, Professor Majid Kajimu, highlighted the pressing need for enhanced funding to elevate Saidina Bakari Islamic Hospital into a state-of-the-art medical facility. He has also encouraged other people to, to, to join um, government institutions so that we can work together with the government to be able to achieve our objectives. And we've been, doing, we've been working with the government before. And we continue to, to, to work with the government, government leaders from the top leadership to, to ensure we develop this, this, this place for the benefit of our communities. Situated strategically along a major highway, the hospital's transformation would serve the community and the broader population. When the president visited here uh, with a representative, uh, laid a foundation stone for a, a new hospital, 200 bed hospital, to be able to, 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 do, to improve services here. That idea is still ongoing, we are still um, fundraising for it, and uh, the master plan for the whole hospital may cost up to $100 million to be able to have a modern hospital for our people, and we are still um, requesting for support from everybody to be able to achieve this. The newly elected leaders of the Islamic Medical Association Women's Branch pledged commitment to their roles. Muslim women are, or Muslims at large are marginalized. Okay, for example, if a nurse in training who is a Muslim has grown up veiling, but when she is in training she has to be told to remove her veil, we feel that is not fair enough. Um, when we go for a passport, we've, not been, we've never removed our veil and then somehow we were supposed to undress. So I think being engaged in politics somehow can offer a voice okay, for us uh, as Muslims and for our Muslim women at large. And uh, not only that, but even in, um, in many other aspects like women empowerment, okay, uh, encouraging uh, income generating activities and lobbying, okay, advocacy and lobbying for our fellow women and fellow Muslims at large. 
participants shared ideas aimed at advocating the common goals of empowerment and progress. Sudat Kaye, UBC News. The First Lady and the Minister of Education and Sports, Janet Kataham Seveni, has said that the reason why government came up with the new lower secondary curriculum is to give the opportunity to the learners to have stake in what they study. She was represented by the permanent secretary, Kate Lamaro, at the award ceremony as King's College Budo Max 118 years of existence. Government introduced the new lower secondary curriculum to give opportunity to the learners have stake in what they study. Teachers knew their capacities, identify personal strengths, arouse their curiosity. The First Lady, Janet Moseveni, says it is assured that learners will be able to change the society. This was disclosed in the speech read by the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Education and Sports, Katie Lamaro, during the celebration of King's College Budo, marking 118 years of proving quality education. Experiences beyond the classroom to maximize their exposure and help them be a wider perspective of the world outside the classroom. With the full implementation of this curriculum, we are confident that this school will continue to nurture more talent for the future workforce of this country. The former Bishop of Namirembe Diocese, Wilbur Force Chitio Luwalida, noted that as church, they are very happy for the quality education and the standard that is up to date. Whenever we come to such a day, we remember all the way the Lord has laid this institution since its inception and the many contributions that have been made by individuals, families and institutions in order to see Udo where it is right now. The Chairman Board of Governors, King's College Budo, Rogers Katende, said that they have plans to modernize the school. And because some of the things you see will not be relevant in their time. At this point, I need to thank the parents for paying school fees. The school no longer has the school board of construct anymore. We have school fees. We commissioned very soon, and it is a The Apostolic Nuncio Emeritus to Belgium, Archbishop Augustine Kasuja, has called upon Ugandans to work harder for the better of this country as we celebrate the day of St. Joseph Day, the patron of the workers. He commended the fathers who took care of their families as Joseph took care of Jesus. <laughs> This was disclosed during the St. Joseph Day celebrations for the Kampala Archdiocese at Chisui Mapera Secondary School in Entebbe. <laughs> the patron St. Joseph in Kampala Archdiocese, Reverend Father Joseph Balikudembe, said that Christians should emulate the good practice. Mission. The senior educationist in charge of Chesubi Mapela, Joseph Damlida, observed that the saint has done better things to Ugandans and whoever follow him. Joseph, the worker. Joseph, I happen to be the Joseph. My grandparents were Joseph. My son is Joseph. I pray for all the deceased who are Joseph in the Kapalaki Diocese. Fred! Osmosis. Freddy, Freddy! <laughs> Fred Dola, my boss, CEO of Inojo, the general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source Osmosis. of the Nile. I don't have money today. <laughs> Just a capillary loan of 200, you get to stock on my shop. The signs and symptoms of success. The bank commander, not the bank tailor. Why hustle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're sorting it. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable.
the government of Uganda and the Uganda Bureau of Statistics is calling upon all stakeholders such as the chief administrative officers, city mayors, resident city commissioners, city clerks, city and division councillors, wards and LC chairpersons as well as the residents and business communities to cooperate with the UBOS field teams as we embark on advanced preparations to conduct the national population and housing census on the 10th of May 2024. The census will be at 10-day exercise to obtain statistical data and information that will be used for planning and policy formulation including information on 1 how many we are 2 where we are 3 how we are living 4 what we own and 5 where we access services from the Uganda Bureau of Statistics has now started listing of households and mapping in the 11 cities of Arua Fort Porto Gulu Hoima Jinja, Lira, Mbale, Masaka, Mbarara, Soroti, and in the Greater Kampala, comprising of Kampala, Wakiso, and Mukono districts. For more information, please call 0755 342 128 or 0773 342 128. This message is brought to you by the Executive Director and Census Commissioner, Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Census 2024. It matters to be counted. Are you planning or in the process of traveling abroad for work? Using irregular channels to find and travel for work abroad often seems cheaper and faster, but you risk being trafficked, mistreated, or forced to do work you did not agree to. Using proper channels is safer, offers more protection, and better access to support services when problems arise. Do not be deceived. Choose the proper channels. Always verify all information before traveling abroad for work by contacting the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, your local district labor office or DSO's office. You can also visit EEMIS website on eemis.mglsd.go.ug. This message is brought to you by the International Labor Organization with support from the Government of Switzerland. Attention everyone, the Ministry of Health has planned to vaccinate all persons aged 1 year to 60 years old to protect them against yellow fever disease. The mass vaccination will take place in 53 districts in these regions. Kampala, Buganda, Teso, Ankole and Karamoja. Vaccination is free and available at all government health facilities and outreach posts in these regions. The vaccination campaign will take place from April 2nd to April 8th, 2024. The vaccine is safe, effective and free of charge and has been approved by World Health Organization and Ministry of Health. This message is from Ministry of Health with support from Gavi. Welcome back to the to the business segment of UBC News tonight. The Minister of State for Cooperatives, Frederick Ngobi Gume, has admired the Korean Samuel Gemgo model, citing its significant role in promoting financial inclusion in rural communities. Now, he commended officials of Samuel Gemgo for establishing more Gemgo, also known as village banks, in Kadiro District, Busoga. He emphasized that the Korean model aligns well with the government's program for alleviating poverty. Annette Namatova, the vice chairperson of Bongole Parish Mall Gemgo in Mpiji, encouraged the community to adopt the Samuel Gemgo model to address financial concerns within the communities. In partnership with the Korean Federation of Community Credit Cooperatives, the Uganda Federation of Community Credit Cooperatives organized a financial training session, Mao Gumgos, for communities in Nawaikoke, Bukamba, and Nansoloro sub counties. This initiative took place in Bulamoja, Northwest Constituency, Kalido District, in the Busoga sub region. The main goal was to address poverty and stimulate rural community development through the establishment of Mao Gumgos or village banks among Balamogi community. Anit Namatovu, the vice chairperson of Bongole Parish Maugumgo in PG, explains. They don't take it for granted that the poor cannot pay. Cannot pay. It's, no, it's not only the rich that can pay. By the poor, you can also save according to what you earn. And you save little. 
the introduction of the Korean Summer Ogum Goes model in Mulamoja Northwest constituency has been well received. It will significantly contribute to financial sustainability at the village and household levels. Minister of State for Cooperatives, Frederick Ngovi Gume, expressed support for the Maugum Goes model and encouraged communities to adopt it, emphasizing its potential to create financial stability within households. Because they should know the culture of cooperatives, the culture to save this business of saying Kola was the India with Sigwaonga neighbor Kai is no longer up, is no longer tolerable. You must get a hundred shillings, save twenty for the future. Now, if you are 200 people in a village and you are saving 2,000 per week, that's quite a lot of money. So the capital must come from amongst ourselves. We are now not going to venture into commercial banks where people are giving you exorbitant interest rates. Minister Gobi Gume said the Maugum Goes model will help communities to uplift themselves from poverty and generate household incomes. When you look at this aspect and you put it alongside the parish development model, approach that the government is carrying on. This would be a very good area to capitalize on. So we want them to develop from the VS, the village saving groups to a certain organized group where they are recognized. Officials from the Korean Federation of Community Credit Cooperatives and the Uganda Federation of Maugumgo's Community Credit Cooperatives were pleased to see a significant number of women embracing the Samaugumgo model. So that Kaye and Robert Bwaita, UBC <laughs> The Director, East African Entrepreneur Association, George Masengere, has urged entrepreneurs to produce high-quality products to access international markets. He was addressing agriculture entrepreneurs at the agricultural machinery discussion in Kampala. Masengere urged them to join the association as to access loans and increase their output. To do transport, to do uh, uh, planting, and all the likes, harvesting, a tractor of 80 horsepower could cost about um, uh, 100 or 200 thousand US dollars. But what is it that we can provide? What solution can be provided to meet that farmer who is operating on five acres? So that's why they are now providing another midway solution that is costing about 5,000 US dollars five years or four years. But if it takes a bigger equipment, it will take maybe 20 years. When we don't have quality products, you can't go further. You cannot fool this European with your products because where you are making it from, nobody knows. But they, they test them. And they are the ones who will promote even to another country. So please, fellow Ugandans, make quality products. Trade Director of East African Entrepreneurs. Mbarara's District Commercial Officer Wisho Adams has, urges, has urged a local loan seekers, I beg your pardon, to calculate and plan business ventures for profitable returns before borrowing. At Lubindi Firma Sako's 13th AGM, Wisho Adams advised on calculated borrowing Mbarara District. Busho highlighted the circle's growth under sound leadership, advocating for transparency in revealing loan defaulters' names. It's progressively growing. It is doing very well. It is very good leadership and they are progressing very, very well. And uh, <clears throat> the issue you are talking about of default, it is a very, very big concern. For any circle to grow, people or members must be paying their, their loans very promptly. And uh, like today, they read out some, some members who have defaulted. They, it's a call to members that they must, they must pay back the loans they took. Mbarara District Secretary for Finance, representing Nyabisirira Town Council, Kashari North, Simon Twashaba, raised concerns about widespread loan defaulting. Development. This bank was started with an intention to help our people to secure some money in the form of loans to start businesses and the rest. And from the report we have got from the auditor, the bank is developing steadily, it is moving from one level to another. One important message that we have shared with our people 
We have told them that there has been a challenge with our Ugandans. There is a problem of multi borrowing, defaulting, and the rest. We have told them frankly that once somebody has got money in the form of loan, let that money be invested smartly. Let that money be invested in the business, the business that shall create more money. That one that has borrowed shall use to repay back. Because it has been a challenge, people borrow, they use that money for consumption, and when that time comes for paying back, somebody fails. Rubindi Farmers Sako Chair, Reverend Father Dr. Godwin Mohanji thanked Uganda Microfinance Support Center. Father Dr. Godwin Mohanji detailed plans to utilize the funds for branch connectivity and mobile banking. We have more customers, we have made some profits, we have a big loan portfolio, and uh, we are really moving on very well. I want to be grateful to Microfinance Support Center through the influence of our MP, Baz Batalingaya. We have been able to get a grant of 50 million to be used to, uh, to connect all our branches. Rubindi Farmers Sacco's general manager Moses Asimwe credited its steady growth to offering reasonable interest rates. Uh, we have been able to encourage members through, of course, government programs like training members on financial related issues, like on how to do investments and do savings, and of course, our credit facilities. Total equity and liabilities exceeding 4 billion shillings. It operates through three branches, Rubindi Main, Akashanda, and Yigorora. GSM 5G and electronics in ICT company has planned to train young people in ICTs to increase their chances of creating employment. The director at GSM 5G, Ali Raza, told UBC that they are opening up a technical training center to empower unprivileged youth. He was hosting pupils of Ibin Abbas Nasri in primary school in Wakiso during an iftar dinner. <laughs> These pretty looking faces are pupils of Ibn Abbas Nasaran Primary School, an orphanage based learning centre situated at Wamala village in Nansana. <laughs> there is a call for sharing and giving back, which is considered a good deed during the month of Ramadan, and donors get rewarded by Allah. Paka Korea Mobile has donated an assortment of items as part of the give back to the community during the month of Ramadan. The donation included clothes and other assorted food items like rice, cooking oil, maize flour, beans to mention but a few to Ibn Abbas Nasrawan Primary School. <laughs> Special prayers were also held with the pupils before the iftari dinner. <laughs> Parker Korea Electronics Chief Executive Ali Raza, accompanied by his wife, explained the initiative at the school they have supported for the last four years. <laughs> this holy month is uh, really giving us opportunity to do what our heart wants. The most important thing in Islam is equalism. When you know people who are need and you go to their door and you give them the happiness, really that is your enjoyment of the Eid. That is your that is all the festival you gain on that day. A Muslim lady, I have to welcome Islam as my deen. So these young people you see here, they are the future for tomorrow to teach Islam. You have seen our Imam today. This evening, it is my first time to see such a kind of Imam at this age. And at my age, I'm so proud about my deen. And I'm so happy. That. So I plan to bring clothes. You know, I'm an African. I'm a Ugandan. We don't feed on food alone. Some clothes are needed. Shoes are needed. Uh, soaps are needed. Omo, you know? We think all that. This time I brought clothes. But some kids, some children are big. There, they have not got, and I'm sure I'm going to bring for them as well. The school's management welcomed the initiative. Thank Allah for this day and for these people that he has joined us with. They have been supporting us 
every Ramadan with Ifital. They came here one time and saw that we had children who were needy. In fact, most of the children we have here are orphans and they don't have anyone to assist. So whenever they give us a hand, we are really appreciative of what they do. Ali plans to start a technical training center as his call to empower unprivileged students. We want to open a technical institute in this country for the free where this kind of children who are not getting education, they must come and get the technology through us because we are the engineer for the software and hardware engineer which where the technology is belong now for upcoming future. Pakakura and GSM 5G are training youths in ICTs so that they can create jobs for themselves. I'm Ivan Juko for UBC. <laughs>
It attracted teams like MTN, Coca-Cola, DTB, Quality Chemicals and Vision Group that will later in the year engage in other codes like athletics, netball, swimming and pool. Thank you so much for being a part of the UBC News tonight. Today with me, Sharon Chomjusha, on the 24th of March, 2024. From the team and I, have a lovely night. Thank you so much for watching UBC TV Inspiring Uganda. God bless and have a lovely, beautiful new week. Bye-bye.